poetry for the sake of poetry, my son. What? I came to compete. I came for the meat. I came for the challenge. I came to cause damage. I came to win judges. I came to start grudges. You might call it a sin, but I came here to win. And this is how I'll begin. Let me open the window into my mind, into my kind. Those with ambition, those on a mission, feed me competition, cause yeah, that's my nutrition. My tuition has been paid. Years of foreplay, I wanna get laid. Showing recognition, I had a cognition. Ha, huh. I'm done with wishing, I'm tired of losing, I'm gonna start boozing. And my liquor is fame. Did you catch my name? I'm going insane, my brain has been infected. Virus detected. You could call it greed, but I feel the need to seek and destroy, to launch and deploy upon you all, my own shock and all. Didn't I make it clear? Can't you fucking hear? I say it again, I came here to win. Ah, my son, then you've already lost. What are you, my conscience? Didn't I get rid of you after cheating on that girl back in high school? So I lied, so she cried. It was well justified. Let's not talk about it because I don't give a shit. My ego, my ego, let go my ego. Let it go, let it grow, let them all fucking know. The winner is here. Now give me my beer. I want them to cheer, I want them to cheer. My name, my name. I want my fame. Give me my glory. I just want my money. What's wrong with that? Ah, my son, welcome to The Trap. I'm really proud uh, about being on Omaha's first team. I'm really proud. I feel like the poets here that I've met here, and I've, I've met poets all over the country, are some of the most grounded, um, hardworking, poets I've met, and I've never met so many people who are really about the community. There's never been a team from Nebraska before, so everybody wants to be the first to do something. Um, I think that it's also important because, like with a lot of cities I've been in, there are some of the most amazing writers I've never heard of scribbling things on notebook paper in closets. <laughs> and this city especially, but this state, is rife with people like that. poem is a gift. It's uh, something that you give to the audience. It's something that you give to your readers. Um, if we did this just for us, we would just be sitting in our rooms reading to ourselves. Words that communicate an idea in an artistic uh, fashion. A strong statement of uh, using an emotional language to deliver a message, a point, a joke, uh, something. You know, movies can be both funny, traumatic, all kinds of things. Same with this. You, you've got people writing about anything. You've got the, the folks who tend to be more punchline oriented, the folks who are story oriented, uh, sexual, uh, job. Uh, it can be anything. The written word spoken aloud brings an entire another dimension of meaning you know and especially then when it's your own work and you're able to try and tell the backstory um, through your emotions and, and through the way that you perform when I first the first time I went to a slam I was amazed and so relieved <laughs> It was like I heard these people reading poems that I understood, that spoke to me, that excited me, and it was just like, it was like a door had been opened that I had been, you know, pushing on and trying to get through f for my whole life. And so I think, um, you know, one of the great things about SLAM is that um, it, it, opens, it opens up those doors and, uh, 
it makes poetry accessible. And then just put together, this has um, context. Oh, <laughs> Sign memberships. If you guys can fill those out right now, then I can send them off. So you wanna? I just wanna make sure we like delegate. So who wants to? You wanna right. be responsible for that? Like I can do that. Yeah. Slime, yeah, I can okay. do that. I can contact those people. Okay. I, I mean, I don't know like, directly who to talk to right now, but I know people who are under Slam Omaha, like his fans okay. and things like that. Okay. Things like that. Yes. Sure. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, that's fine. Yeah, yeah, you can put in something about the React Center being active yeah, like, yeah, in your community. Yeah. Like whatever you want people to. to yeah, no to problem. Back. We, now that we actually have a team put together, now we can generate an interest in it. You know, and I've seen other teams like put together a page where you can see who's on it, you know, what they've been into, and then what the team's doing to promote. Yeah, I think we should definitely go with the angle of um, of uh, this is your team. This is your, you yeah, know, this is your. We're representing Omaha, Omaha as a as, as a cultural, you know, hub, mm -hmm. and and uh, we really need to get that information out. You know. We could go up against New York and all these other people, and we're, we're biased against this. is our first time up there. So when you go, but when people walk away, they say, who were those guys from over there? Yeah, it's true. There's a certain. Uh, we want to give up. We want to have a good reputation. But I think it's important for us to gel as a team. I think equally as important as rehearsal, if not more important, is getting the team to do as many gigs as we can in as many different circumstances. Because every room is different, every crowd is different. Poetry Thank Slam you. team. We're, We're going to the national tournament in Chicago. We're, We're having a fundraiser Omaha. with auction items, raffles, poetry and music starting at 8 tonight. Good right inside. To Thank, Thank you. you. Have a good night. Enjoy yourselves. Would you guys like to hear a poem for a dollar? We have poems about cows, spiced pork rinds, <laughs> coffee and astronomy, and Jesus. Though we're not selling Jesus, but we have pretty good poems about Jesus. <laughs> Only a dollar can't hurt you. It can only what do you expand think? your mind. Jesus lent me ten bucks when I forgot my wallet at lunch. Sure, he could have ordered a chicken pesto sandwich and broke it into two full meals, but he's no show-off. That's what I like about Jesus. Jesus tells me I'm saved, then he laughs real loud. <laughs> Jesus makes me nervous. <laughs> Me and uh, the rest of the uh, Slam Poetry team are having a fundraiser tonight down at the down at the Healing Arts Center. There's gonna be like music and, and uh, like poetry and like you know all kinds of stuff. Like they're, they're raffling some stuff off. They're having uh, like a silent auction and stuff. So like if you if you have, have some people together, like you guys, you guys should come down here. This is a poem called Code Orange. It, it's a little different. Uh, for those who see me out front doing light and happy poems, this is a little. And I'll just talk about it for 20 minutes and then do the poem. How's that? Um, all right. It's not always a little boy who cries wolf. Sometimes the wolf cries wolf and points away. We now go live to a press conference with White House Press Secretary Ari Fleischer. Mr. Fleischer, we are concerned about where this war on terror is going. At a press conference to tell us about the war on terror, Defense Secretary Rumsfeld told us there are known knowns. These are things we know that we know. There are known unknowns. That is to say, there are things we know that we don't know. But there are also unknown unknowns. There are things we don't know, we don't know. Can you tell us how to explain this war on terror? Yes. Duct tape your door shut. We are on code orange, code orange people. Blue skies no matter, there is anthrax. Somewhere, somebody said something about smallpox. Wherever, an unnamed man reportedly said something big was coming down. Eventually, a man said people were going to die. People are going to die. Americans are going to die. The officials are quoted as saying things. Officials are quoted as saying, hurry, hurry, run, seal yourself in a Ziploc bag in a lead wall box in a hole in the earth in prayer to our God because sources suggest 
we're not ready. We aren't scared enough. And if we don't get a little more hysterical, then it's a terrorist who will win. Because sources report it could be any day, hour, minute, second duck could be any metropolis, city, small town, farmstead, or possibly somewhere else. For God's sake, there are experts saying, we're not safe. We're not safe. Now do what we say and nobody gets hurt. There's fear out past your walls. There's fear itself blowing against the plastic sheeting and the bars of gray tape. There is so much to fear. We have to do more. We have to fight them, kill them, cripple them for Jesus. Amen. It's not always a little boy who cries wolf. Sometimes the wolf cries wolf. And it's not always the wolf our little boys are sent to kill. Yeah! Well, performance, obviously, it's always important, um, especially in slam. You can have a, a piece that's beautiful and, and brilliantly written, um, but if you read it in the same tone of voice, if I were to talk to you like this after a while, you would drown me out. <laughs> so, um, I think one, one of the things that my coach, one of my coaches said to me one time was that the poem, you have a responsibility to give that poem the best performance that you can and it should become part of your DNA, that's how he described it. The poem should be part of you, not something existing outside of you. You are dangerous because you look like my father and you taste like water because in this circus, you don't juggle flame or paint your face. You pitch the tent. Your sweat falls unnoticed on the ground, planting salty seeds to grow whole oceans for the women you love to swim in so that when you come to them towel in hand, they can tell you honestly, eyes and lungs at half mast, I am doing swimmingly and you'll both go under breathless. You are dangerous, bent on one knee, hell bent on loving me, while the earth around us spins about drunk on its own neon sermons and nursery rhymes. You wait, full of silence, the piano in the palm of a wheat field at dusk. This is hardly common, and you have everything in common with dreams. It is thus your eloquent bones. Well, they startle me. For now, I am miles from you. By day, I wander through strange cities. At night, I sit in motel rooms and keep the company of bad art and even worse TV and unsent postcards. And I've been thinking if all I can be to you is a memory, then. Remember me, the still life of a woman in want of your company. Yeah, return to me again and again, because tonight even the moon is on your side. Persistent, she wills her light into my window, a floodlight burning your skyline into my heart. People can put things together in a three-minute form with an attentive audience and release things that they wouldn't have a venue for in their normal lives and their normal conversations. Uh, it's a chance to get the audience's unconditional um, attention for three minutes and say what you've got to say and and then the beautiful thing is they get to tell you whether or not they bought it. We're doing just a little uh promotion demonstration for the Omaha Poetry Slam team. For those who don't know what a Poetry Slam is, it's basically competition poetry, making a poetry reading something more interactive with the audience. Uh, I'm sure many of us have seen poetry readings w which were excellent nap time for us. And so what a Poetry Slam is, is try, try to keep the audience involved in a certain way. This is a love letter I wrote to my hometown a few years ago. This is called um, Letter to Memphis. 
Sing to me, you bittersweet bitch. You've been promising me your sunset symphony down by the river for 17 years. And now I've come home to collect. Watch your curves rise up over the mighty Mississippi like iron cleavage. And I've hugged your hips in Midtown. Nibbled on your ears out in Cordova and stopped for a cigarette afterwards in Germantown. You taught me English in seven different languages. Growing up in a black neighborhood and entered in a white prep school, I was forced to do the dozens on a blonde blue-eyed jock in a BMW now. Yesterday I tripped over three Nobel Prize winners as I went for coffee, but that'll be our little secret, won't it? You always love to keep it in the family. I've been your child, but now that I'm your man, there's one thing I've grown to accept. I can't charge you for the time I've done here without also being in your debt. The promo poster legacy of your past is dragging your future behind it by the hair. The wire mesh of a microphone chips my teeth and amplifiers still ring in my ears. I played bass guitars in all-night bars where you can see the air in front of your face and a cocaine taste still lingers in the backwash of my beer now. Twice I've shed my skin for you when things started feeling the same. I've done Michael Stapp and Jesus Christ for you and damn if you still don't know my name. Hip-hop ass to drop shot talk, lazy afternoon slipping down the drain, endless friends turning in a mobile, wheels rolling the sky, burning the horizon down by the riverside where I went to pray. I pray for what? And get those lights turned back on. And talk back, back talk, head down, head on, a collision across three of I-240's lanes. I was staring over the guard railway over Union Avenue. I, I realized my life wasn't just temporary, it became voluntary then too. I've seen wide flight camera lights on out-of-town nights of the Ku Klux Klan. I watched a museum spring up out of Lorraine Motel while a statue of Nathan Bedford Forrest stands. I stroll through your nights and watch them laminate Beale Street with neon lights and ATA. I've seen your most talented children get in schoolyard fights over recycled aluminum cans. I've used anger as a kind of chemotherapy to rid my body of your pain. But I'm tired of watching my hair fall out and my blood spiral down the drain. I was raised here in our teeth and well waters pumping through my veins. I'm an unfiltered mid-south Tennessee weed and I grow every time that it rains. But God, when the wind picks up and blows open the doors, I can see something else is still there. I hear poets writing prayers in closets, beating guitars, crying under the stairs. Forgotten memories are walking down them streets and panhandling people for change. Almond brothers playing concerts in living rooms. Impressionistic paint strokes hiding out in mushrooms. Voice and box and brush drums scraping coffee house walls while feet slide across the stage. I said, Memphis, I don't know if I'm coming or going, but the people around me in the cars are dreaming like blood cells. A throbbing fills the interstate with a fat back beat, and the thumping in my chest starts to swell. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light? Well, here comes the sun. It's a judge that is blind and it's hateful and kind to the unjust and merciful, non-profit, commercial. You'll be hot, you'll be cold as you're told, bought and sold. Practicing with the team is, a, is just a very good thing because normally when I write, it's a fairly solitary thing where I'll write the poem and then work on a performance and go do it all by myself. Here I've got other people who are watching me and who can tell me uh, just little comments about, you know, when you did that one line, that was really great. Something that maybe I wouldn't have noticed or wouldn't have stuck in my head is something I should really keep doing. So it's great to have other eyes and ears involved and people who know what, know what they like and know what, they've, uh, know what they're doing. Time was 2.40. Ooh. Um, I would, let's see. Um, in the, especially in the beginning, I'm, I'm losing sort of part, of part of your emphasis. I'm losing exactly what it is that the poem's saying because it all runs so much together. So if you could try and use either pause or inflection to emphasize particular words. A little bit. And then what, what, what did you say when you kind of bring your hands down over your face? 
I didn't quite catch Courts it. Courts in their silence pronounced with finality. Yeah, if yeah. you do that, like, more pronounced and, like, maybe pause a little bit at the end and ha take, like, a deep breath or something like that. Right now the goal is to just go in there and do the best we can. I mean, to make semis this year, you pretty much have to get first both nights. And while I think that's entirely possible, I'm a logical person here. <laughs> And I'm gonna say that it's not logical. Um, though I'm optimistic. We are the winning team! They are the losing team! Winning team! Losing team! We are the winning team! What makes the grass grow? Burn! Burn makes the grass grow! Kill, kill, kill! Uh, significant thing that, that relates poetry to sports is that um, who wins is, is really kind of, if you're doing it right, it's unimportant. It's, it's about having fun. Um, the competition part of it is a hat trick. It's just a gimmick Mark Smith came up with to figure out how to do a poetry reading in a bar. And it was excellent, you know, he gave the crowd a stake in what was happening. And that, that's something that appeals to anybody, you know. I mean, how many armchair quarterbacks have you hung out with watching a game where they, you know they'd be dis disagreeing with the defensive line coach <laughs> and trying to do something differently? Well, this is a chance for the audience to kind of throw their two cents in, and, and boy, do they. I think the most important thing for it to qualify as a good performance is did they get it, right? Did you reach out across, and did they understand you, you know? Some people can deliver their performance or their poem very excitedly with a lot of energy and people go wow look at that but have no idea what he said or what you know what the poem was about I just want sex and violence. one of the things that you do learn to do after a while when you've been slamming for a while is to watch the judges look at the judges and kind of what their body language is like um, their age, where they're placed in the audience. There are some, there are some methods you can employ to uh, help yourself out strategically. But in the end, you know that's why slam is 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 beautiful because it's it's ridiculous. I mean, the fact that you can judge a poem, which is something that can be so personal, and and I can do I can do one piece one night that will get a ten from all the judges. I can do the same piece a different night with different sets of judges, who give it a five or an eight, and who, you know, just, it didn't connect with it at all. So, it's ridiculous, but that's why it's so beautiful. It's so absurd. <laughs> I believe that our team has done as well as we have and will continue to do well because there is heart and purpose behind what we are saying and how we are saying it. It's not just us too. A lot of people helped us in Omaha. Yeah. A lot of people gave, told us they believed in us. A lot of people gave us money because they believed in us. We got, it's not just us here. We got a bigger policy than New York. Yeah. One of the team members had taken Matt's masturbation poem and turned it into a group piece version, just who says what and when. And I printed out copies for everybody. I brought it in. I'm like, okay, let's do this. 20 times. And I was like, okay, I dare you to run that without your script. And he did. 
So, and they did, and they did just a great job. And so, now that the dynamic of the team is all focused towards one common goal, that it wasn't really focused towards four. Yeah. Say, that's that's all shit. So it's pretty much, you know, what the, judge, what the judge is like. Because Which is why I want to have masturbation ready. Because if we're the only one with a group piece that's solid, we're gonna look but sweet. Which is why, if we do it, we have to nail it. If we don't think we can nail it, we don't do it. In that case, please welcome up, Emo We went up with the last poem of the night, meaning we needed exactly this score to win in a venue that had been giving low scores all night. We got exactly that score, and it was a high score that we needed. So that's not too probable, <laughs> but we did it. I'm like, I'm beautiful. I'm ready, so ready to just share what I got to share. They like it or they don't like it. Actually, at this point, I'm so happy with what we've accomplished that it, it doesn't doesn't matter. And I know that if we win tonight, it's gonna be like, oh my God! I can say it doesn't matter. Oh, I'm so calm, but it's gonna be nuts if we if we do go on, you know. Right arm, you put your right arm in, you put your right arm out, you put your right arm in, and you shake it all about. You do the hokey pokey and you turn yourself around. That's what it's all about. The hokey pokey is fundamental. I mean, you gotta, you gotta let go of all your reservations and all your issues about shaking it, grooving your thing on the street corner. <laughs> That's where our energy comes from. It's extremely important, actually. It gets me laughing and feeling good and happy, happy. I feel it stirs up the bodily harmonies and, and incites nerves, which is the most clean, renewable source of fuel one can have on stage. Because you got the hokey and you got the pokey. Exactly. Exactly. Question. That's what it's all about. You know, me coming back are those moments where somebody just gets up on stage, nothing but them, and a microphone for three minutes and they absolutely peel my head back <laughs> and make me think about something in a different way. MC Steele says that the slam is a performed poetry competition judged by five members of the audience. You just met them. Poets have three minutes to present their original work and may choose to do so accompanied by members of their team. If they do that, it's called a team piece. The judges will then score the piece anywhere from 0 to 10, evaluating both the poet's performance and the contents of the poem. Because halfway across it, little boys throw rocks at the moon, try to knock out that night light. Their vibes are invisible, shot in the dark, echoing along every American block. Our houses are luminous. And to my kind, those with ambition, those on a mission, Feed me competition, cause yeah, that's my nutrition. <laughs> <laughs> my job's just to keep you laughing, keep you listening to the funny poets so you don't stray too much, pay too much attention to that stream of consciousness ramble some other poets read. That sloppy poem, that overuses the word revolution too much poem, that cast your vote with a stone poem, yes. register your status to actually vote a poem, that get out of bed on election day, put down the gordita and actually go! To a polling place and vote polo. <laughs> because I have accepted John Ashcroft as my person.
I was really proud to be from Omaha because this was the caliber of people I was working with and um, that was that was probably one of the biggest things. It was probably the single biggest contributor to the fact that we made it as far as we did as we were working as a team. I think people will notice that not only is there a show in Omaha that they could potentially do, but that there's a reason they would want to come and see the Omaha uh, poetry community that I think is a really, really good selling point for us. We brought something that, that, we, that was really close to our hearts and so, I mean it sounds really cheesy, <laughs> but we did win. Even though we didn't win, we won. I mean, I was so proud of my team members and I was so proud of myself and I was so proud of the pieces that we chose to do and the fact that all the pieces had really important messages and paid as much attention to the message as to the language. As calm and cool as we kept it and as, you know, as much as we said, all right, well, you know, we're going to come out here, we're going to share our stuff when we want, it was just like, yeah, you know, and it was... It was uh, freedom enhancing, you know, just felt more free as a being and as a person. I felt, you know, big and alive and excited and, uh, you know, all that good stuff that you want to put in a bottle and, you know, save some for later.